Beautiful. Um, I'm pretty excited to be here and share with you guys a little bit more about, um, I guess, making grants more digestible, how to be prepared. Um, grant, some grants we'll talk about. Um, first, we'll talk about kind of, let me do the overview. First, we'll talk about the basics and how do you be prepared? Um, where do you find grants? And then understanding those grants and how to apply them to projects that you've prepared. And <clears throat> so in beginning, um, you'll want to know your farm needs. Pro uh, grants often work on project by project basis. So for example, you wouldn't apply to a grant to fund your farm. Um, but you might apply to a grant to fund your hoop houses on your overall project of a farm. Um, just to give you some idea, a lot of grants are built to support some, <clears throat> some primary areas like infrastructure, distribution, cold storage, sustainability. Um, and so if you think of your projects under those banners, it will be a lot easier when you do start surfing and finding grants. Um, it'll be a lot easier to imagine how they might apply to your projects, whether it's research, whether it's farming, whether it's infrastructure. Um, as you're planning your projects, you will absolutely um, want to know who your partners are. And by partners, that can be maybe nonprofits that you partner with. Um, we've heard some of our uh, previous ones talk about like just now in the in the Western Star presentation, um, they talked about farmers partnering partnering with technical advisors. Um, so know who your who your partners on your grants would be, whether they're grants that you can get through UDAF or any of the other presenters you've heard today. Um, would it be contractors? Would it be consultants? Will you need employees for this project? Um, and just being very familiar with the ins and outs of that. <clears throat> Almost all grants, you will need to have your federal ID, um, your unique entity ID. And then also, as you heard from NRCS, <laughs> you'll want to go ahead and register with them as well. Uh, many grants are ran through them, and they're a wonderful agency to work with. So, um, <clears throat> so then... A few starters on how to um, kind of evaluate and prioritize the needs of your farm. So one thing that you'll want to do is um, many grants, as I mentioned earlier, support specific topics. It's, you know, specific crops, um, grazing. And so you'll want to make sure you understand what categories your projects fit under. And then um, also many grants don't cover specific things. So for example, one grant may cover a um, capital improvement where the other one may not. An example of that is a grant that um, Caroline mentioned earlier. It is called Specially Crops Block Grant. Uh, many people had asked for more information on that. Um, so it's designed to support the consumption, uh, education, distribution, and longevity, essentially, of specialty crops in our state. Um, specialty crops sounds really big and broad, but it's, it's a, a, a lot of crops qualify under specialty crops. Um, I mean, there's some grains, there's some flowers, trees, nuts, um, along with a very large list of veggies and herbs. <clears throat> Most likely you grow a specialty crop. Um, anyway, and so that grant is open with many priorities listed, right? And so you would want to think if you have a project that's centered around distribution or um, as Caroline mentioned, that's something that's important infrastructure for small agriculture right now. Um, <clears throat> if you have a way to make sustainability more uh, accessible to farmers, um, things that impact more than one producer are, are part of the requirement. Um, and so if you go to our website, which I did already put in the chat, if you go to our website, you can find out more details about that grant. It is open from 
well, it's open now and it closes on March 24th of this year. Um, hopefully we'll have award announcements April 14th. Um, so go check it out. See, see if you need support. Uh, so many people here on these presentations have echoed the sentiment that we are here to help. And I, I can't say it loud enough. You guys don't, don't be afraid to ask um, whether your project qualifies, whether you need to, you know, whether big parts of your project are missing details. Um, <clears throat> just go ahead and, and reach out. That's what we're here for. And that's what hopefully I can help get the wheels turning with this presentation on how to put your projects together. When you think about your, your projects though, back to the capital improvements, you'll want to know what the, what the grants you're applying to pay for, um, including capital or non-capital improvements. And, and that allows you to guide your own spending for your, your company's growth and, and success. <clears throat> okay, so we've already kind of gone into knowing who your projects are, who your project partners are. Here are a few more examples of who you might find are partners in your projects. Um, for any project where you might feel um, outside funding, that, that you, you know, maybe a candidate for outside funding, um, it's super helpful to already have an outline of that proposed project ready. Um, that way, as you're perusing grant opportunities throughout the year, you can kind of start um, attaching opportunities into those outlines and be ready. <clears throat> um, and we already talked, you know, about those IDs. Um, so here is a list of, of different grant um, so resource pages. I would sure like for you guys to have the, the opportunity to, to find many others. There's so many more. I mean, you heard today from so many opportunities and there's just there's more out there it's it's a matter of being prepared and ready to harness those opportunities and again can't stress it enough connecting to the right people amid those opportunities so everybody um these slides will be available so you don't have to try to hurry and copy and paste links or anything right now um, so a lot of people are unfamiliar with um, how to know um, if, their, if their project qualifies for a grant or um, how the grant works. And so uh, one website I have ready to go since we were talking about it was that specialty crops website. So let me um, share that one with you and, and kind of show you some key features. Can everyone if someone will just confirm that they can see that website. Yes, we can. Very good, thank you. Um, okay, so we'll look at this specialty crop page. Most of the information you're gonna need um, will be accessible on any grant through this. Um, so you'll find the pieces of those different application needs right here. Um, usually you'll have important dates, what a grant will cover up at the top, what its intentions are essentially, um, who's eligible will usually be available, um, terms and conditions. This is something I highly recommend everyone thoroughly review. It will take you some time, a good, I don't know, four hours to really read through it, digest and understand it. Um, but that's four hours really well spent rather than correcting mistakes made on the back end. Anytime you're applying for a grant, time saved up front is well spent later. <laughs> um, so really I would review those, um, make sure you're familiar and aware with what the grant will and won't cover, which is some of the information that you'll find in those terms and conditions. Um, most grants will tell you exactly how they review. Um, and this one is no different. So most grants will tell you exactly how they review and rank and rate and vote essentially on which projects to fund. With specialty crop block grant, you are able to immediately view our scoring sheet here. So you know exactly where we're putting our weight and our priorities ahead of time. <clears throat> Uh, one last thing I'd really like to point out, so many grant websites also post what previously projects they have funded. 
And um, this is so important to helping you understand the history and kind of some of the, the biases or leanings of that organization, whether it's UDAF or, you know, SAR or NRCS. If you can see projects that were previously awarded, it can help you understand what they're looking for when, when they're making their decisions. <clears throat> um, okay, let's go on back to this presentation, guys, so you can, you can kind of see the more details there. Okay, <clears throat> so um, you can see we've kind of reviewed those things. So just make sure that you're familiar with the ins and outs of that grant before, I really like to do that before I even would start writing an application. Um, I would compare all of these four areas, the award funding, terms, conditions, the selection process, and re previously awarded projects. I would compare that to that project outline that I made and see if it really is a genuine and good fit <clears throat> as you're going through it. Um, so a lot of grants are, are um, funded annually. There may be many one-time grants that will just be around this one time, but something like the specialty crop block grant is funded year after year. And um, the amounts may vary and the priorities may change, but you can pretty well count that that funding will, will follow year to year. Um, so uh, knowing what those those ones that are consistently funded over time, knowing what their approximate cycle dates are can be so extremely helpful. It allows you to not be caught by surprise for something that was a, a really good fit for your farm. Um, and so keeping a calendar date of reminders, maybe just put it on your Google Docs or, I mean, not your Google Docs, your Google Calendar or um, however else you keep track of important dates. Um, <clears throat> Each year, like I said, funding may be consistent for a, a, a grant like the specialty crop block grant, but um, there may be variation year after year. Um, Caroline earlier had mentioned how distribution was, was pretty important needed infrastructure for um, small agriculture right now. And so um, you may see that last year there was less emphasis and this year there's more. <clears throat> but however, um, when that comes out, you'll want to review that against your project again to ensure that your project is a, is a, a good fit for this year's award cycle. Um, and then also be aware while you're while you're you're creating your project plan for any specific grant, be be aware of what their actual um, award period is because some grants will run in a 12 month period some grants run three or five year funding cycle um, and so you'll want to be sure that you have a plan for how to manage the timeline that's required for that grant um with just i mean I, i'm pretty ahead of time so i'm going to get into some more of the nitty-gritty that i was going to fly by a little earlier okay um, so when it comes to the actual part of, of putting an application together, you guys, a huge suggestion I have is to have letters of support already requested to people who are your project partners for this project. You've already gone through outlining that. Once you've decided who your project partners may be, even if it's three months ahead of when that grant might open, go ahead and start reaching out to people and asking for those letters of support because Breath. I'm sorry, what was that? Did somebody ask something? No, they just unmuted by accident. So oh. <laughs> <just> carry on. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, okay, so um, have letters of support um, already in the works. And you know, one quick tip for that, you guys, write the letter of support for them and just ask you know them to edit it as they see fit and then put it on their own letterhead. This is super helpful um, for them and you're much more likely to get that letter of support um, returned back. Um, so use um, the granting agency's application form templates. Um, I have seen in the past grants come in where people just kind of wrote out their plan in the format they wanted it in and put it together and and submitted it and it takes 
quite a bit on the grant manager and side and the, and the team who has to do the, de- the judging, it takes quite a bit of untangling um, for us when they come through like that. Um, so the best thing you can do to make sure that you don't accidentally get ruled out or disqualified because we couldn't find all the right pieces in, in, a, in a misformatted application, um, make sure that you're using those specific uh, application forms. <clears throat> And um, always be thorough in budget, budget explanations. Um, you can say something like, mm, you, you need it for um, compost, but how many yards, what's the specific cost? What timeline throughout your project? Uh, make sure those details are included when you're talking about just, you know, budget explanations. Um, <clears throat> and then again, I'll say it again a million times, contact the grant manager. You've heard from a lot of us say this, please take it to heart. We are here to make sure that agriculture grows and is supported in the state and we we want people to win. So we wanna help. And check and double check your proposal before submitting. You know, not everybody is an expert at grammar and punctuation, but the basics when you're you're writing, um, you may go from a copy and paste and only half of what you thought you were copying and pasted actually ended up in the in the application document. Um, just little things like that that you may not have meant to have happen in the transferring of information back and forth. So just check and double check. No matter what, you're going to miss a grammar here, a capitalization there, a hyphen here or whatever, but just make sure that all of that hard work actually does get copied over correctly. Um, That has been a tragedy I've seen in the past. (laughs) Um, And then always have all of your requested documents. Each grant will have a different list of, of what they need. Some may need resumes from the project manager or project lead. Others may need letters of support or documents of incorporation. Um, Whatever it is, you've just got to submit those at the same time and be ready with them. So when you're first reviewing all the way back in the beginning stages of reviewing those grant documents, make sure you make a, a clear list of of documents that you need to gather along the process of putting your project together. Um, so there's a lot to do in the in the preparation project. And I really wanted to spend a lot of time focusing on that with, with everyone here because I feel like that's the part where people feel overwhelmed and oftentimes give up before they've began. Um, So hopefully with that kind of clarity and process um, support, people will be more um, prompted to apply, which is where we get to the being awarded portion of of this exciting cycle. Um, I really love this part, you guys, but it does not come without hurdles, okay? So expect there to be a lot of learning if you do get awarded for a grant, and that's okay. Again, Rely on your project managers. That's what we're here for. Um, and that's what that's what's going to keep you, you guys compliant and moving your projects forward successfully. Um, so being awarded a grant has specific things that you're required to do. Um, you know, project updates along the way for many of them are required. Um, outcome management. A lot of times you have to submit receipts and invoices along the way. Um, And so make sure that you have your financial processes established for for those requirements and and successful reminders, again, back to using your calendar reminders, successful reminders to make sure that you hit those points and your project managers don't have to chase you for those information. Um, Sending project updates is always welcome when when you're considering us on our end. We love to hear about our projects. We love to be able to um, be engaged and involved in in what's happening in our state. Find out what hurdles maybe help help um, if you know when you submitted your project there was a different cost of supplies than there is now, um, and help you work through those hurdles. Um, 
So make sure, you know, again, you're connecting with us and um, communicating any kind of updates that we might be able to help you organize and be more successful with. And um, again, we don't want you to just be awarded, but we want to see you success, you know, you succeed and, um, and make, a, your, you know, your project something fantastic. Um, okay, so we have a lot of time. I'm just going to leave that page with grant resources up um, while people are free to ask questions. Are there any um so go ahead and put your questions into the Q&A if you have that. Um, I've got some questions. How can you, um, can you find out anything about what's those reports, you know, what reporting requirements are? are? Cause for some of the USDA grants, there's actually certain portals that you have to use, but UDAF is actually pretty easy on that as I recall. Yeah, um, so it just really each, grant will vary requirements. Um, and so one grant may require a, um, a monthly check-in of your financial spending, of your progress, and another grant may just only require an annual report. And so they're gonna vary widely depending on the granting agency, the terms and conditions of the grant, and, and what's necessary for us all to remain compliant and eligible for future funding. Yes. And then um, I think you talked about it, but there's usually those those parts of the grant, like the narrative or sometimes that's broken out into different, you know, like areas and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can be intimidating to kind of approach sometimes. But if you kind of break it down and just start to outline it and just start jotting down some rough notes and then coming back yeah. and kind of fill those in and make it more, you know what I mean? Um, I, I could not agree with you more. And that's why I really suggest working in that outline format for all of your projects long before you know what grant may be possible to fund. Just starting that project outline and then supplementing it and supplementing it and supplementing it until you really have a well-formed project alongside well-formed list of funding opportunities that may apply to that project. Yeah, I also liked when you talked about early on about starting first with kind of what you think you want to do with your, pro you know, projects you want to complete on your um, operation and stuff, and that fits into what you are, and then kind of see how some of those might fit into some of these programs that come up, because I think sometimes you don't want to let a funding program kind of completely decide what you're going to do in your operation, but, you know, figure out what you're wanting to do. And then I really like that you said, then start to see where pieces might fit into what funding programs are available. Um, so Greg Cross in the Q&A has asked, are some grants more competitive than others? And I would say, um, yes, there are. Um, there are a varying degree of competitiveness, and that has more to do with how many applicants um, a specific grant typically receives. It has a lot to do with that applicant versus availability and funding. Um, and so you'll find some grants are quite a bit more competitive just because they're a little bit more well-known and um, could use some more funding for the amount of applicants they have. And some of them vary from year to year. Like one year, they'll just happen to have a whole bunch of applicants and another year, they won't have very many. So it just really kind of depends. Oh, um, it does. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, it just really kind of depends. But I also have found that once, even if you're not successful, after you've put, like um, there was this program with UDAF that um, the $1 million was available as the pilot program that Caroline spoke to. There was $14 million of asks for that and 80 some applications, I think she said. And so yeah. obviously not everybody was successful, but once you put that project together and stuff, you've still got that, that you can then go seek, you know, other funding sources or you can, you know, it might open up again or, you know, different things like that. Oh, you've just landed on one of my favorite points. That's the, that is the best reason to have your projects ready and essentially put together. Because once you do that initial work, there may be small 
um, alterations you would have to make to a project plan to apply for different funding sources, but you're able to do that because your project is pretty well put together and you know all the moving parts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Greg also asked, how do you find less known grants? And you know what, Greg, that is so tricky. One thing I would really like you to do is to sign up for our UDAF um, newsletter. You can do that from our UDAF page. We do send out um, grant information. On UDAF's website, there is also um, kind of grant information. And we don't only share our grants on that, on our on, not on our website, on our social media, I mean. So we don't just only, um, and, you know, push UDAF grants. We push as many open grants as we know of. Um, it just we like to support our farmers and make sure that they're that they have access to as many resources as we can provide. Um, Anna or Caroline, is there? Do you want one of you want to share your screen and show you with them how to apply, how to um, sign up for that newsletter? But you know, I have UDAF right up and I'm already screen sharing. So let me just do that for you. Um, so here, ignore, this is not the good tab, but um, you can go to UDAF homepage here. Um, I don't think it changed for us. Oh, We're it did. Um, oh. PowerPoint. Okay, give me one second and I will escape out of that PowerPoint and then I can switch over for you. <laughs> there we go. Can you guys see it now? Is everyone yes. able to yep, see that now? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so on there, you can. There's a prompt for signing up for the mail list. Let's see. Let me see where I can find it at. Yeah. This is a very good question. Let's see if I can find out. There is a link on here. Caroline, are you aware of where that link is at? I'm screen sharing, but I'm not seeing it. Maybe she's not on here. Um, if you go to the Marketing and Economic Development tab and scroll down to newsletter, it was formerly called the Cultivating Connections newsletter. Perfect. So here is that page she's talking about marketing and economic development. And then there is the UDAF newsletters right there. And so you can you can sign up to those there. Thanks, Caroline, for chiming in. Yeah, I was, thank you. I was working for it. <laughs> so just go ahead and put your email in there and you can find out. And then also you can see um, where it says read current and past issues. So if there's a topic you know came out prior, you want to look for it, it's there. Great. We are pretty conscientious about not spamming people. That frequency is generally about once a month. Yeah. Yeah, we do like to consolidate our communications for that very reason. Ruby, this is Katie. Can I ask a question as well? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't do the Q&A function with my control, so I'll just ask <laughs> mine with the mic. Um, I really liked what you said about being very specific about uh, budgetary line items or if um, being specific about operational details. I've sat on a few of these grant review panels, and I find that's one place where um, sometimes uh, uh, these uh, applicants uh, maybe don't provide enough detail um, or enough reasonable detail to make their application um, as competitive as some of the other applicants. So I was wondering if you could expand upon that a little bit, but you gave the, the example of compost and then maybe uh, delineating out a little bit and saying, here's how much and here's the price per um, you know, cubic yard or whatever it may be, or um, sometimes producers will say, uh, oh, my operation does this, but they don't really explain why. And the grant reviewers are just sort of left saying, well, I don't necessarily understand then why this is an important mm -hmm. part of the grant to be funding. So I was hoping you could just talk a little bit more about being descriptive in um, some of those details and grant applications. Absolutely. So for example, um, if you are doing, let's say, a research project for, um, you know, a, a pest control method that doesn't involve, you know, um, manufactured chemicals, let's just say, um, and, you, and you just said that, that doesn't really give us the like, why, why do we want to develop this? Oh, well, because my farm is actually part of an agri-hood, 
And we um, are highly concerned about what chemicals we use among growing children in our, in our community. And, and fill that gap in, right? Don't leave us to assume why in this case and this specific study are you, are you um, finding this is a priority, you know? Um, and then also try to use, you know, other, other research and, and community um, documentation to support your grant. Don't just say, we believe that it's really important in an agri-hood environment to um, reduce man-made chemicals. Um, you can use research and support that's already done to kind of bolster your claims. And, and that's really valuable when we're reading through because we can understand then where you're coming from and why you reached that conclusion for your priorities. Great. So I think that that's um, about it. So thank you so much, Anne. And um, she'll, we'll post the slide set and um, these links that she shared um, to the website. So that should be there um, shortly. Probably